7 o'clock tonight. I'd like to um, welcome everyone to tonight's Chelmsford Conservation Commission meeting. Uh, my name is Chris Garahan. I am this year's chairman of the Conservation Commission. The uh, first item that we have on the agenda is the open session citizen concern. So if there's something that's not on the agenda tonight, uh, just let us know. Raise your hand. Identify yourself either um, in person or virtually and we'll uh, entertain those questions. All right, well, I don't see any questions, so we'll move right along to the regulatory hearings that we have for this evening. And the first item that we have on tonight's agenda is a notice of intent filing by the town of Chelmsford with respect to 5 Pond Street. Uh, Trevor Collins is listed as uh, representing the town of Chelmsford Department of Public Works. And, um, do we have a legal notice for this? Yes, we do, Mr. Chair. Uh, pursuant right. to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, MGL 131, Section 40 and the Chelmsford Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 187, the Chelmsford Conservation Con Commission will conduct a public hearing in Room 204 at the Chelmsford Town Offices, 50 Bill Rucker Road, on Tuesday, October 25th, 2022, at 7 p.m., to consider the notice of intent filed by property owner, Town of Chelmsford, for proposed work within bordering land subject to flooding bank bordering vegetated wetlands and associated 100-foot buffer zone at 5 Pond Street, further identified as Assessor's Map 124, Block 468, Lot 15. The project entails construction of a new extension to the existing boat ramp. Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you, Carl. Thank you very much. And now, uh, do we have a representative from the town to speak? Yes. Sir, come forward. How's it going? Uh, I'm Trevor. I'm the assistant town engineer. A lot of new faces in here, so. Um, Including I'll yours. <laughs> 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 um, this, the reasoning that this project came about was from a fire response to a missing persons in the lake sometime last year uh, that was hampered due to the existing uh, conditions of the ramp. Um, Dave, I don't know if you can show those existing conditions uh, sure. in the yeah. pictures just so they can get an idea. Uh, it's up a few pages, yep. So that's that picture right there is the ramp and the picture below that shows a good idea of what we got there. Um, you can see it's it's all over the place and you know pretty muddy at the end where the guys had their boots stuck and you know took them longer to get out on the lake to rescue or get out on the lake to uh, start searching for the missing person um, so we would like to extend uh, this ramp off that gravel uh, and put in a new concrete slab that's eight foot wide and 16 foot long um, which will increase the safety for not only uh, any uh, response like the fire departments but anyone that uses that lake as well. Um, it's located on town property um, and the DPW is intending to do this work. Um, <coughs> the dam, uh, sorry, the pond is, pond water level is controlled by a dam uh, located between Lakeside Ave and Westview Ave. Um, there's just stop logs in in that dam uh, or sluice way um, where you can raise them and low, lower them um, depending on uh, what height you want the lake to be at. Um, so we, we want to put in that concrete boat panel uh, that's eight feet wide by 16 feet long and it's going to be surrounded by a, a riprap edge that's going to be about two feet wide to prevent erosion um, coming off that slab and then underneath that it will sit on a crushed stone bed uh, which will also sit on a geotextile fabric uh, for separation um, that is shown in the boat detail uh, which is right here So as you can see in this uh, detail, um, I shot the water levels during a drought period uh, and during, uh, towards the end of the a drought period after we got quite a bit of rain. Um, so during the drought, the water level was actually off the end of the ramp. Um, and then now it's about halfway up the ramp that we would like to build there. Um, so given that, you know, depending on the, uh, time we do this work, we would set up a uh, silt fence and sock 
uh, if it was working the dry to prevent um, uh, erosion going into the, the uh, reservoir, or if it, the water is up high enough, we'll put down a turbidity curtain all the way around the edge uh, to prevent that erosion from spreading into the lake. Um, let's see. Uh, the, furthermore, the uh, slab will be set uh, to pretty much existing grades, so we don't plan on changing any flood storage. Um, and you can see that we have a wetland replication area that is equal to the construction area, which will be impacted um, in the top left, a uh, little to the top left of that ramp there, um, which we plan on replicating. However, we are working um, on getting a, a soil specialist, which Dave will go get a sample first and let us know if we need one to see if it is indeed uh, border vegetated wetlands. So uh, we're still working on that. Um, but if, if we do need it, that's our proposed location. If we don't, we can take that away. Um, other than that, I'm, if you guys have any questions, I can answer them if I... Oh, thanks, Trevor, for the... Uh, Presentation. Let's uh, let's just see if we have any comments from our our agent, Mr. Coons. Any preliminary comments, David? Sh sure. Uh, <clears throat> I'd just like to um, uh, continue where um, Trevor left off about the um, the bordering vegetated wetlands or or taking soil samples to try and establish definitively um, that this is in fact a uh, BBW. Um, obviously, it's disturbed. You, you can see that. I don't know. Do co are commission members at all familiar with the history of the of the boat ramp? Um, this certainly looks to me like at least a large part of it could be fill already. You know, rather than you know um, just un, un, undisturbed uh, hydric soil. Does any does anyone know the history? Has fill been dumped into this area historically? Uh, Dave, anything? anything? Dave. Is this the only ramp that's at the pond? Uh, yes. I think it's the only one on town owned so, land. So, yeah. The, yeah. so the open space stewards have built it and maintained it over the years. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just been there, Dave. Well, that, that, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's two there. One that cost takes care of and one that you, now you guys have historically taken care of this one, right? Uh, yes, we're the, deep, uh, the town of Chelmsford. And is, is. and is this one available for the public's use or is it just for see, for uh, fire, fire and police and you guys? Uh, as far as I know, it's uh, open to the public and for fire and police and has, has a key as well. Okay, so that may get to your question, Dave. So I th over the years, because I don't think you guys have really maintained this, have you? I think the open space stewards have maintained it to varying degrees mm. over, you know, some years they do a great job, other years, they used to pull it out of the water too, but this, this doesn't look like it ever came out of the water. Oh, well, this is the dock. The, you're talking about the dock. There's that's dock not the same, well, that's what I mean, it's not yeah, the same thing. It's a dock thing. and a ramp, this is the yeah. ramp. Okay. You, yeah, the, the then dock I, then it's, then cost has had nothing to do with the ramp as far as I, I think understand. So. Okay. I think so. So, um, so I, uh, would like the commission to continue the hearing, you know, pending, you know, trying to make a, um, you know, a, a more definitive assessment of whether this is in fact, you know, wetlands that will need to be replicated under the, um, under the regulations. So I, I think as, as Trevor alluded to, I think it's a matter at least of first getting some additional soil samples to see whether it is in fact, you know, actual wetland soil or it's just fill. You know, see if we can make any kind of determination. Why don't we? Dark. Why don't we ask some informational questions and, yeah. then, and then continue? It. Yeah, yeah, good, good idea. So we'll go to we'll ask some informational questions. Maybe we'll start down this end with John first. What, when you pour this slab, uh, what are you going to use? Are you going to pour a slab or are you set up? It's going to be precast. A, it's going to be a precast slab. Yep. Uh, that is actually we got a cut sheet at the very last page of this document. It's uh. We plan on getting it from Shea Concrete. Okay. And, you know, just an excavator or, or a lull or some piece of set, heavy equipment yep. will set, set it, it on the crushed stone that we yep. prep. Yep. Uh, is, is eight feet wide enough? Eight feet is wide enough for our emergency responses. Uh, I mean, you can see that this uh, reservoir isn't that big, so there aren't big 
boats going in here so you will see if you go out there there's a lot of pontoon boats I know that in the area yeah. and that's typically wide enough for your standard pontoon boat okay uh, I, I see nothing wrong with this as far as what they find underneath the, where they want to put the slab okay. it's a piece of precast going in the water and it's going to be for safety yep yep but if there's some work that's going to be done to the sides. Yep, yep. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be, you know, putting that rock edging, riprap edging around the whole side. So even if the trailer does slip off the side, it's not like it's going to get stuck in the in the mud there. It will be on that riprap edging, yeah. which is also there to prevent the runoff uh, yeah, from eroding. I've actually soil. used the boat ramp over the years with Neil Stanley and stuff. You know, he's a fixture out there on the lake. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> He's a fixture, trust me. <laughs> uh, but no, I precast set down done. Yep. Simple. Yep. Okay. Yep. Not much to it. Dig it out. Put in your rip, uh, fabric. Low water. Well, yep. Once they lower the pond. Well, we don't know if we will generally lower the pond you know what we'll try to do is maybe wait for another dry spell wait wait a minute what do you mean you don't know if you'll lower the pond we don't necessarily it's need to responsibility it's the heart pond association right to lower the pond well it's the cranberry block no you're talking about he's, he's talking about heart pond yeah heart pond yeah what's that's the, raised and lowered by the heart pond association has it been raised and lowered in the recent years? Yes, okay. every year, twice every a year, year, and it was just done in the month of October. Okay, I didn't. I well, wasn't aware of that. I was. Well, that gets to one of the questions I want. Okay, you need to understand what the high and low water marks are because they they lower the pond in October and they raise the pond in April. April. Yep. April. So and and there's there's quite there can be quite a range and they also have the ability to raise or lower it at times other than that if there is a need yep so uh so, right now the stock so where it's so it gets to the, the also gets to the ramp you're building is it going to be submerged at a high water at a high water level and is that okay with you guys or not you probably want some of the ramp always out of the water right probably mm -hmm. well you got the, well, you got the asphalt up top um yeah, so it doesn't go the, okay the, I, I, as it's my understanding where we no oh, uh, Ms. Rivard's here tonight, but it's, what, 12 to 18 inches range from high to low on the water levels? Oh, my gosh. I didn't bring Steve. He's the fact Yeah. Guy. Anyhow, you better it's just... Quite a bit. Because I, I know you've got an elevation on one of your... To, you, you, you ought to just confirm that to make sure it's not screwing up what you want to do. That's yep. All. So if, uh, <clears throat> like you said, they remove some of those stop logs in October... So I went over and shot the stop log elevation uh, on 10-6, which is That would have been before they started. To, they started to lower it in the middle of October this year, I think. So that Usually been, they do it around in Columbus Day. Yep, so 196.2 would have been your high water because that's where they would have had it all summer long if we didn't have a drought. I don't have a so, problem. I, I, mean, I yep. just you want to make sure it doesn't screw up what you want to do with the ramp. That's all. Yep. No, I I understand. You want to be far enough into the pond. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you think far. you ought to make that thing twenty four feet long? <laughs> well, he can check the check <laughs> um, check the hard pond, pond the association. Dave's, the Dave's point. We've got some some um, Steve, historical and community knowledge here. Mr. Christopher, um, who's not here, is the guy who. Is, it, is that his first name or his last name? Stephen Christopher. Steve Christopher is responsible for raising and lowering the pond. Okay. And he's got a lot of historical data that would be available. Now, just for your information, years ago, DPW did it, but then they passed the responsibility off to Hart Pond. Gotcha. <clears throat> Right. But uh, we can help with those contacts. We got Ms. Uh, Rivares here tonight as well, and David can certainly help. Kind yeah. Of so if I could sure. get his contact uh, sure. to reach out to him to get those dates where they lower and raise it, uh, we can all obviously plan the work around that. Um, exactly. You, know, you want so. to be kind of in sync with, with what's yeah. going on. Yeah. And so when we uh, when we go to do this work, if it's completely in the dry and they let us 
lower that pond low enough, it will just be using that silt sock and fence because uh, there won't be a need for the turbidity curtain. Understood. So the turbidity curtain was only for if it was in water work because I didn't know it was regulated like this. You know, I thought it stayed but like it's that. It's good to have own. kind of a plan just in case. But, but, yep. Trevor, you, you, uh, you, but you shot the water level today, right? Today or yesterday? Yeah. The, sh the water level today right after the recent rainstorm was 196.3. So, I mean, it went up an inch. But that's from the rain, so obviously it was flowing right out. If you, if you measured it today, it should be relatively low, because he let the water out in the middle of October. It's uh, right, but do, so um, it was there was water flowing over the dam, though, right? Yes. Do you, do you know about how how high that? It was, it was only about an inch high of water flowing over that dam. So okay. it's been low this year, right? Yep, and yeah, that shows. So, 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 what did you say the dam was at? Trevor? The dam was at one ninety six point two, which is that level okay. shot on ten six twenty twenty two. So, so it's not going to get any lower than that, right? Unless it's a severe drought like we had, or or Steve moves the stop logs because it does. You know, there's probably four. I want to say two by four stop logs built up, so you probably got two two feet, a one a one and a half two feet worth of stop logs holding that water back. Okay, so 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 you you measured the elevation at the top of the stop logs. I did. I shot the top of the stop log. Okay. Yeah, Pam, you want to say something at the podium? Well, I just wanted yeah. to... Yeah, just close to the podium so we can have it recorded. So all your fans oh. out in TV land. Oh, yeah. The, there's a big audience out there You're watching You're making me this. blush. <laughs> Pam Rivard, First Lane. Um, Steve just has taken one board out that I know of, and now he'll, he'll go back and take out two more, I think. And the other concern I have is the measurements he's taking here. We've had a drought, severe drought, so the pond was way, way, way lower than it has been um, usually. So well, that's probably good because that means that ramp's going further into the water. Right. It goes to John's comment about you want to make sure that it's far ramp enough is into in the, the water. <laughs> Um, and I have Steve's contact information with me, so I can give it to you before. The, and the other um, comment I wanted to make is that that boat ramp is not open to the public. The people on Hart Pond can use it in case of emergency now. We have one key that um, actually Steve Christopher has. So if we have somebody on the pond that has an emergency, has to get their boat out for a repair or something, they call Steve, and Steve sets up a time. It might be a good to have time. some sort of signs out there, uh, particularly with the improvement to the to the uh, well, the boat. You know, to this. this uh, can we thing. touch on that a it little? It used to be open to the public. Uh, I'm, and, uh, it's can just, we confirm whether that ramp is open to the public or not? It is not. Okay. It used to it be. The, re the reason I want to ask, and I'll ask David this: Is a ramp considered a pier or a dock for the mass? state regulations I don't think so okay we need to confirm so. that too because there are specific regulations about building piers and docks in ponds in Massachusetts and it would not surprise me that a ramp is not considered but we need to confirm yeah. that the other is hard ponds a great pond and there are right. certain state regulations that apply to great ponds and we want to make sure that w whether this ramp needs to comply with those regs or maybe it doesn't I think if it's a public safety ramp it may be excluded but we we really need to verify that well well that I think you're referring to a chapter 91 license yeah, yeah. so um, the, the and it's possible I can I can I can look into that to see if a chapter 91 license is required but uh, a few years ago the state turned over issuance of chapter 91 licenses to local authorities do we have a harbor master here? And <laughs> well, it might be you. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you should, you, <laughs> don't know. It, Who do it, we know in town that needs a job? He needs another hat. <laughs> you don't know. I think it actually defaults to the police chief um, if no one is officially appointed. Um, but that's that's the state's, you know, um, been trying to put all of this work on the towns and get it off their own. Yeah. Shoulder, let's, so. let's let's circle back here. We kind of. I John, don't think we're John's doing anything wrong. Yeah. I just I, I, think, sure. yeah. I think it's a great thing if it's for yeah. public safety. Right. 
Just make sure it goes into the water far enough. And if it is public safety, that's why it shouldn't be. You would love that plum was designed the for the cranberry bog. I'm sorry? That pond was designed for the cranberry yeah, bog. Right, and that's initially. Why that's why, that's why raised, that pond is there. That's why it's raised. For the bog. cranberry bog. Yeah. And the bog's not being used as it was. Yeah. But over the years, I know for a fact that that ramp, you could put a boat in there. 40 years ago, you could put a boat in there. It just hasn't been maintained. It just hasn't been maintained or whatever. But I remember as kids going up and throwing a boat in there. Over and, the years. And may I address that? Um, yes, please. And I remember as a kid having 20 and 30 boats running around in that pond, um, ski boats and so forth. Yeah. Harp, uh, speaking on behalf of Hart Pond Association, we are very, very um, concerned about this ever being open to the public. We are a shallow pond, seven uh, average depth is seven feet we're just one mile long I think allowing the public to launch boats in there would be detrimental to it environmentally that's why the state reg about great ponds is important yeah because that talks about public access yes and and it, we need to have public access to it because it is a great pond but to have a public launch then I think the regulations also state that you need to have a water source for washing the boat and someone on hand to probably in, to in, uh, inspect a boat yeah, coming in sense. from the outside. We fight like mad as, and the town is going to now the invasive weed problem and allowing p boats in all the time would just exacerbate that problem to no end decrease quality of life there, erode the shores, and disrupt all the flora, flora and fauna in the pond. So we're very committed to that. I'm, I'm, for the, in, I'm absolutely for increasing the quality of the boat ramp because it is very poor. And I know that you had trouble, the fire department and police department had trouble this summer getting it in. But um, right now it is not open to the public it's just for the fire, police department, and people on the pond in an emergency situation. Well, thank you, Pam. Okay. Appreciate thank that you. statement. Uh, John, are you done with your questions? I'm comments? done. All right, good. Uh, Chris. Sure. sure. And I mean, I don't want to speak for the applicant, but I would. I think that maybe you just misunderstood whether it was public or, 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 or locked. Yeah. Correct. I'd, right. I don't think you're. I don't think you're in. You're intending to make this a public. Yeah, I, I, whatever it is now, that's what exactly. we are going to continue to use it as. We're just looking to uh, improve it. Uh, I've, I've just been told it was a public ramp. <laughs> so, um, And I think we, we want to be careful um, if we're going to go down the Chapter 91 Avenue. I just did one in Gloucester, and it took me like a year to get through. So it's a very lengthy process. Well, I don't want to go down any no, regulations. Just, I just want to make sure we're not violating any regulations. Right, That's right. all. Um, and I agree that the uh, the precast is the way to go. I, I have no issue with, with this at all. Thanks, Chris. David. Where is the ramp in relationship to the road and the and the, Bre and the Freeman bikeway? Is it almost as dead? You cross, the, you cross Pond Street, go over the Freeman, Yep. Bike path, and you, then it's on the left. Yes, you know, you, and is it you, in in marshy area now, or woods, or is it on the beach? It's uh, separated by a small uh, wooded area, and okay, probably so it's not on the beach. It's not on the so beach. So it wouldn't no. lend it, itself to public access either, right? Yep. And does work have to be done between where you want to put the new ramp and Pond Street, or is that road okay? That road is in good okay, condition. Okay, so you yep. won't be doing any work there at all. Nope. Um, and we don't know what wetland replication is. Uh, I said, what there is an, a concrete ramp there now, or is it a wood? What kind of it's ramp is uh, there now? asphalt uh, that leads down to a fill area. So it's it's laying straight on the ground. Uh, no, it's it's ramped down a little bit. No, but I mean. Is it, is it an open space under the asphalt, or is the asphalt laying on the, the, the beach part of it? Uh, I the ramp don't is know. made of asphalt? You there, said? Half the ramp is made of asphalt, half the ramp is That's made of... I'm just wondering if there's any open space under the ramp now which lends itself 
to wetland? Flat, flat, flat. Not under the asphalt, no. So, it, all right. Because one of the things you have a problem with when you build walkways and piers is you get growth underneath and you want to keep that growing. You don't want to kill it off. But that will get to what David's going to find out about wetland replication. That's all I Yeah, think. We'll, we'll test the soil at the end of the asphalt for, for that. Yep. In, in, in this area? Yes, correct. In between the pavement and the water? Yep. And, and you can see, I mean, one, one, of, one of the reasons for not wanting to do the wetland replication area besides just that it's more work is that you can see this is, uh, you know, to dig up, have to dig up this area over here is going to be a bit of a disturbance yeah. in the buffer yeah. zone. Exactly. You know, so well, it's it, already grown. How much bigger is the ramp from what's there? It's about the same, isn't about it? About the same. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll be. So even though it may be work in the wetlands, we're not. You're not removing more area by putting a new ramp in. Yeah, it's just a matter of the soil, uh, like yeah. Davis said. So, we'll, when we come across those tests, um, we'll figure out if we need to replicate it or not, and we'll do what we need to do. Okay, good. Uh, Dave, good for now. Uh, Bill? Uh, no, I like the idea of fixing it, and uh, we just continue it and give them the, whatever questions we have for the next meeting. Okay. Looks good. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Mark? No, I'm, I'm just going to consider myself a construction. Let's say it's going to be finally in the con. You didn't do any tests, just take a machine and just dig what you had down below there at all, did you? No, we haven't gone down there and disturbed anything, You'll just find that surveyed. When you, when you start doing your. Uh, no, I, I have no problem with that. Uh, rip wrap on the side, you're not going to extend it much beyond what the size of the existing driveway is. Uh, it's it's going to be a little on the inside of the yeah. existing pavement, so we aren't going wider than the, the existing pavement that's there. And uh, you don't, you're not going to pour any concrete, so you don't have to do any dewatering. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. All right. Good. Uh, Carl. Are you, are you removing anything in this process? Uh, the soil we dig up, that's... Okay. Well, and, and it'll have to be saved. I mean, if it, if it is hydric yeah. soil and yeah. it's going to be a wetland revocation area has created that hydric soil will have to be saved okay. for the... Okay. Herb. Yep. Depending. And, okay. Yeah. All right. No, that's all. Okay. All right. Uh, David, anything more? Yeah. The only, the only other question I had was I think it would be good, Trevor, if we could um, determine the maximum level the lake could be lowered by removing all of the stop logs. So okay. I think, Pam, you said there are four. I believe there are four. So it would be it would be interesting, you know, just how far down we could go, and maybe we can go down far enough so that so that the for this work the water level of the lake could be lowered and be out of the the uh, water entirely. Yep, I think. And yeah, I, w I would just add, I think it'd be really good for you to meet up there with Steve Christopher on yep. site. I'll get his contact information. You'll find it valuable. Thank I'm you. Sure. <laughs> Yep, definitely. So I uh, I have the top height of the dam, and I'll get the bottom height, and I'll talk to Steve on, you know, what what we can do with lowering and raising it as we as we need. Because it looks like from the plan that we only have to go down to 195 for it to be entirely out of the ramp to be entirely out of the water. Right? Yep, correct. So yep. Um, hopefully hopefully we can do that by removing you know enough logs. Yep, stop logs. I I believe when I did shoot it. I uh, shoot the elevations on uh, the 1st of September there. I did walk over to that dam, and water was still abutting against those stop logs. So mm -hmm. I believe we can get there again, um, if I remember correctly. But I'll talk to Steve and make sure. That and, and, you know, I think it's worth, put, uh, you know, seriously considering putting that as a condition in the order of conditions, that, right. the, that the water level should, should be lowered to the point where you know, construction of the ramp can be done, you know, entirely out of the water. Yeah, makes it easier. Definitely, yep, I agree. Cool. All right, uh, good. Well, this is a public hearing, so if anybody from the public has some questions, comments, please come up to the podium. Right. Again, give us your name and address for the record, please. I am still Pam Rivard, First Lane. <laughs> That's good. I'd be worried if there was a change. <laughs> um, Two, two comments. Um, I know we don't take all the boards out because it causes flooding in the basements of the houses downstream. So we have to be careful of that. But Steve can, Steve can talk to him about that. But my other concern is because the top 
Oh, the picture's not there. The top of the boat ramp is asphalt. And asphalt's very uh, bad for ponds. I'm wondering if you'd consider removing, I don't know how big a job that is, removing the asphalt and replacing it with concrete to take that runoff. I'll just leave that with well, you. I think that's a, a fair question, and maybe the uh, DPW can look into that uh, question and have an answer for us when we come back next. Okay, another thank you. Another slab. Yeah, I think so. Put another slab in. I mean, I kind of like that myself. Slab but of concrete, the slab of concrete, yeah. done. Yeah. Be done in about four hours. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they have enough money to do that. Yeah, but budget uh, is a concern, but um, we, we'll, we'll look into it for sure. Okay. Good. Uh, anything else? Uh, any more questions? Anybody from the commission? So we're uh, our next meeting uh, right now is November 22nd. So we could have uh, this hearing continue to then. Was that going to work for, on your schedule? Yeah, we should be able to come Trevor. up with the uh, the answers to some of the open-ended questions we had here. Good. 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 We get some more information then for the commission. Uh, all right. Do we have a motion then to continue to our uh, meet this hearing to our November 22nd? Uh, motion by Second. Dave. Good. We get uh, second by John. Motion by Dave. Uh, any discussion before we vote? We need a list for them to questions. Oh, you pretty much know what we need. I, I yep. got one question. When did the gate go in? Do we have a year? Gate where? I, I do not know the, the answer to that. at that ramp. Oh. I have no More idea. than 22 years ago because that's when I moved Okay. Down so I'm not that's off. From, when I moved into the neighborhood. Okay. So there was never a gate there back in the day. But I understand about the, the association and not open to the public and everything else. So they're going to keep the gate and everything else. Correct. Yep, everything. We, yep, we would keep right. the gate. But there was never a gate there when I was a kid. And we know how old you the are. Time, right? the I'm, 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 the it was privately owned. That is true. Yeah. There was never a gate there when I was a kid. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. John, John do you know when the, this became town land? As far as I know, it was always town land. <laughs> oh, it, it, Growing up in Charleston, you had a pond there, and you had a pond there. <laughs> this ramp is going to be for public safety only. Public safety there has only. There be a gate there. And yep. if somebody's got to put a boat in that belongs to the association. Right. And we weren't planning on changing any of the, the locks uh, for them. So no, I, I, this is not part of the equation here. Yeah. Right, but I'm just throwing that out there that I didn't. So uh, just to kind of take it away for you, I mean, certainly one of the big questions, concerns was the, the wetlands replication. Yep. You know, yep. Uh, understanding kind of exactly what's going on out there as far as the bordering vegetated wetlands goes. What are we looking at for uh, replication? Generally, the commission likes to see uh, replication uh, greater than like one to one, just because our there's a there's a little schedule in the regulations that says that depending on how much wetlands are needed, what the replication ratio should be. It's not one to one. It's not one point two to one. It depends on the size, but it's in the conservation commission regs. Okay, I can look at that. I mean, because our experience has been over the years seeing the different projects. It, again, it depends site specific, but yep. a lot of times it's kind of shrinkage. You, you go in, you look like you're going to replicate it, and stuff just doesn't take and vegetate and all that. So that's the number one issue, I think. And then, I don't know, is there anyone, anything else anybody wants to flag as particularly a concern? So who's going to check the soils to to see Dave is? I, 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 I will check it. Um, okay. And, and so you're yeah. going to determine whether it needs to be replicated. Yeah, I'll, I'll, right? I'll, I'll, make, I'll make an effort, but if it, if it looks like it's still unclear, I've, I've suggested to Trevor that, um, or asked him if the GPW might have a few hundred dollars to pay, pay a professional wetland scientist. Okay. So hopefully that won't be needed, but yep. we'll see. Uh, any more discussion before we take the vote? Yeah. Yeah, yes. I would, again, just caution everybody that if this is what we're looking at right now, what, if you're going to be ripping up that vegetation just to replicate wetland, is that really a wise idea? I, I would not. Say it again, Chris? If, if that's the area that they're essentially looking to replicate, correct, if you're yeah. looking on the right-hand side, that would essentially be torn out and replicating wetland. Right. Is that really worth it? I, 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 I don't think that's worth it. certainly won't tear it out if it's wetlands. But that's where the replication area was going, yeah. was going to go. Well, we don't know if that, well, what that's I would say even if it's wetland, 
I wouldn't. I would not I would recommend. I agree with that. Common sense would say just like yeah, leave it alone. I, I wouldn't recommend uh, what? replicating I, it. I, it's just not, that you're you're destroying wetlands to create wetlands. Well, that was my question, but you didn't answer it. That's why I asked why again. Okay. Well, there you go. You know, I wish it, it's just that that's what the regulations on paper require. I mean, I, oh, I agree. Don't I, wish, I wish it didn't have to be done. We, I, if we need to <laughs> wetland replication, we'll <laughs> find an area where it can be done. One You're right. We won't do it where wetlands are. No, but but if but if any if anyone has knows where a more suitable location might be that doesn't require you know rip, ripping up that kind of vegetation, that would be great to know it. The beach. Uh, <laughs> the, beach. The, the far end of the parking lot. <laughs> Far end of the parking lot. Far end. Far end of the parking always lot of Fun Street. Well, always the it's always end. it's where, always flooding. Where, where where where's that? The, well, I don't know. There's a parking lot no, there. No, we near the beach. <laughs> you have to go out there and look. Well, hopefully we don't need it. Yeah, let's yeah. yeah. Let's well, go one thing at a time. Let's hope we don't. Okay, so. And also, I, I assume we, we haven't got any comments from. DEP yet, right? Well, we won't, because it we hasn't been submitted. submitted to DEP yet. Because I, I asked Trevor not to submit it to DEP, DEP until we could hopefully come to some better conclusions okay. about exactly what wetland resource areas okay. were being impacted. Okay. All right. Thanks for clarifying that. All right. So, then all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Unanimous. All right. See you back on the 22nd, Trevor. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank Thanks, you. Trevor. Mr. Chairman, before yes, we go to the next item on the agenda, I would like the commission to consider if reevaluating what the town's policy is on raising and lowering the level of water at Hart Barn and maybe put it on a future agenda for discussion. The reason that the water is raised and lowered, as John said, is historical. It's based on the commercial operation of the Cranberry Bog in Carlisle. We all know that is not going to exist anymore. Correct. So the need to raise and lower for cranberry bogs has gone, or will be going. But there may still be legitimate reasons for raising and lowering. I think we ought to articulate them and put it down so that DPW and the Park Pond Association and the Commission can understand it. It's probably going to take some fact-finding and understanding. So it's not something we can do in one, but I'd like to maybe Put it on the agenda, and some of us, Carl, me, anyone else, see if we can, hard, you know, we can talk. See if we can gather some information to begin the process. Yeah. I well, mean, we, we may decide we just leave it the way it is. Well, but in any, in any case, if if it does continue, if it does continue to be raised and lowered, it really should be done, you know, through the regulatory process. Yeah. You know, the commission it's like a spring and a fall. It. And I'm not so sure it should be done by private private par people either. It's maybe it's for the benefit of the town. Maybe it's the town that should take the responsibility back. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Dave. All right. So uh, that's um, tonight's uh, notice of intent down Chelmsford Five Pond Street matter. The next regulatory hearing that we have on the tonight's agenda was a notice of intent that was uh, after the fact filing that was continued from 927. Uh, it was so, Silva, Mr. Uh, Mr. Agent, what's happening? So, Mr. Silva is, I guess, having problems with his contractors. Um, we all know how contractors are. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 <laughs> I, I believe him. I, I, he's, he, I believe he's working he with me in good faith. I think he really is having problems. He's, he's, he, he, he's pretty sure he's found somebody to. I, I think the most important thing is is to deal with that pile of dirt that's right next to the wetlands. I've. I've emphasized that to him over and over again. He he seems to think he's found somebody who can take care of that, you know, very soon. I mean, it was in the enforcement order. What's the physical size of the pile, David? What by what, roughly? Well, I would I would say it's it's a good eight to ten feet high, you know, right at the edge of the and, wetlands. And the diameter is. Oh, 30, prob 40. probably 40 feet anyway, and you and put it, silt fences around. Yeah, it? yeah, but, it, but that's it, I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so that is I, I have emphasized to him that's the most urgent issue yeah. from the con from the commission's perspective. So um, he he has asked for a continuance, uh, you know, to the 22nd, uh, pending someone getting in there and um, you know fixing the dirt pile per the enforcement order. So. He's been pretty good working with you, right? Yes, yeah. He's he's done everything I've a, I've asked him to do, and again, I think he's had some legitimate problems with contractors that are out of his control. Dave, refresh my memory. What does he want to remove it, or is he going to move it out of the wetland area? 
he he's he's uh well well he want he he wants to build an addition um that's part of it but right. with but with regard to all the the dirt that he's pushed over near the wetlands the enforcement order requires that yeah you pull it all back out of the wetlands um restore it to the original out of the buffer zone restore it to the original grade and then you know plant it you know stabilize it permanently so he has he's he he gonna have to take any out off site um I don't know for sure because because I think a, a lot of it actually comes from on site. He he dug a, a huge hole. I'm not sure why, further up a gradient on the property, and then moved all that uh, dirt down there. So so I think the only the only fill that probably has to come out of the site is what he's dug for the foundation, okay. uh, uh, for the addition. So. All right. Do we have a motion then to continue to uh, the 22nd November 22nd? John and the motion. Second by? Second. Bill on the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those unanimous. All right, good. Okay, uh, next under, uh, can, uh, let's see, we have a discussion item. We have a request for a partial certificate of compliance, so 129-00606, 130 Turnpike Road, Orchard Woods Condominiums, and also a uh, uh, you know, discussion on the policy, the commission's policy on granting partial releases for individual housing units. Uh, something that our conservation agent brought to my attention recently, indicating that you know, uh, you know many commissions have a policy on something like this. And he asked me what's what our policy has been, and it's been kind of an ad hoc basis over the years that I've been on the commission, where it's kind of like fact and circumstances evaluation. Uh, the commission looks at it and sometimes says, yeah, they're comfortable with doing a partial because they feel they still have some recourse with other units or whatever it is. But it was a good good item to talk about it. So, David, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I'll just give a little bit of background on this. So I, I, uh, request, I received a request for a partial release for uh, an individual condominium unit mm -hmm. up at Orchard w Orchards Wood woods um, where the certificate of compliance was never issued for this project which which dates where back is this? to two this is off this is at 130 turnpike um, so this 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 was a, a, a no what was that I'm trying to think who's of the where, builder where is 130 right past Warren Ave yeah right yeah it is it is pretty far uh, down it's pretty uh, far uh, down Kent used to live oh okay but but this this was this was uh, for an order of conditions that was issued back in 2004. Again, one 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 of those situations where the certificate of compliance was never issued, and and, and actually uh, there is some correspondence that was written by a predecessor of mine named Trillium, uh, who uh, who wrote wrote a letter to the developer you know reminding them the certificate of compliance was never issued and that there were compliance there were requirements in there uh, for stormwater um, management and you know the inspection and monitoring and as far as I can tell we never received one report um, for for that so um, so there were a number of things that uh, caught my attention uh, when I received the request um, for the partial release, I don't think it's a good policy to for the commission to issue partial releases because eventually you'll have all partial releases for all of the units and still no certificate of compliance. Um, is there anyone from the association here? Um, because I did I did have an on-site meeting with the president of the Orchard Orchard Woods um, Association and the and someone from the management company, Alpine Management. Uh, we met out on site, um, looked, looked at the, um, the stormwater management in infrastructure. I, you know, I thought we came up with a, real, a really good understanding of what needed to be done for the commission to issue the certificate of compliance. Um, I, I, uh, the president of the association sent me an email, you know, verifying that um, and committing to it. Um, and I, I thought he said he would be here tonight to talk about it with the commission, although he apparently isn't. Um, so that's that, and and I and I said I said I would write a letter, and, and which I, which I off, I often do in cases when in these situations where you know there's a closing schedule and somebody some title examiner finds that there's an old certificate of compliance or or 
you know, on, on, on a proper on a property um, that's outside the commission's jurisdiction, but the parent property had an order of conditions. I often write a letter saying um, that you know either either that property was not uh, the property that's being sold was not subject to the order of conditions, or that um, you know I've inspected the property. There are only a few things that need to be done, and if they're done, I'll. Um, recommend the commission issue the certificate of compliance that's that's always worked in the past that's always been satisfactory to the closing attorneys and it was indicated to me um, in this situation that that it would be um, acceptable uh, in this case as well in 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 the meantime the um, the association will um, you know have everything done that I said needed to be done for the full certificate of compliance but that's probably a good year away because they have to remove. There's, there's, and, and, and one, one of the drainage basins is fine. They've, they've been maintaining it well, but the other drainage basin is, is overgrown. Um, it's, it's, in particular, it's full of Japanese knotweed, which we've just missed the window to uh, treat it. So they're going to do that next year. And you know, once all of those things are done, I'll recommend the commission issue the certificate of compliance. And, and in, in the meantime, if the letter that I write is acceptable for the, for the sale of the unit, then that should be okay as well. How many Thanks units? Background. Yeah, How many units are there? And when was it built? Uh, a, a built, a built, about 2000, built about 2005. I, th I think there are like six or seven um, duplexes. It's not a huge development. So no, totally. That's the one where the driveways are very tight. Right. The parking yeah. is very tight on it. Yeah. We, had, we, we spent a lot of time on that site when mm -hmm. it was being designed. I see. And as I recall, the driveway goes down, goes down to Turnpike Road, and there's a wetland swale area between the property and Turnpike. And we were always, and there have been water issues along along uh, Turnpike where that mm -hmm. is and also a bit further up where uh, what, what are the houses that Jay built years ago? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the development? Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of water comes but out. But it goes there. up there and it, there's, right. a, there's a wetland buffer area between Turnpike and whatever <coughs> residential units are in there. So it's 12 to 15. Is this the first one that's been sold? No, I'm sure it hasn't been. And, I'm and sure. they were able to sell it without a certificate of compliance. Uh, yep, yeah, um, and I and I think in this particular case, there was just a very um, aggressive title examiner and, and closing attorney. Um, now but they don't normally release them unless it's COC, right? Well, um, they shouldn't, but it, it <laughs> seems to happen a lot. And, and in fact, in, in in my orders of conditions, that I explicitly say that um, if all or any portion of the property is sold, that a reference to the order of conditions has to be included in the deed, and that I'm and that I am required to review a draft deed prior to the sale. Now, you know, I think probably tracking and enforcement. Maybe our, you know, as a practical matter, our, is a different issue, but at least it's in the order of conditions. How rigorous was the uh, order of conditions with the special orders originally? Um, what we it, wanted them to do. Well, I, 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 th I think that it looked pretty good. I think, I think the main issue was the the perpetual yeah. inspection and maintenance of the stormwater yeah. and and providing the commission with the reports. Again, it doesn't appear that that was ever done once, even despite my predecessors. That's why you know, that, was, that was probably one of your first tasks, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us the status. Well, and and you know these these um, issues are gradually being uncovered, and and that and and that's. That was another condition that that I put in the issuance of the order of the certificate of compliance is that is that this needs to be done annually, you know, forever from now on. From a, for, from a practical perspective, I think this commission's stand on these has been we were willing to release par, put partial releases on a certificate of compliance, providing we were withholding enough asset value if that's the right term in order to make sure everything was done right now whether that was one unit or five units as chris said it, it was a fact pattern based yeah. as to what was available i mean i don't mind releasing partial certificates providing we've got all the power that we need to ma make the whole thing executed 
Which sounds like what, where you you are now with this. Well, I I, I think we we're, we've reached a conceptual agreement for that. You know, I, I I'm not I, in general I'm not a big fan of partial certificates of compliance because I have seen a number of times where they get recorded as a certificate of compliance rather than a partial release, and you know that's not right. Shouldn't happen. So I I, I prefer to avoid them if at all possible. You know the partial, the partials. They're, they're too ambiguous. Was that? They're too ambiguous. Right. Yeah. They can be. Yeah. What's ambiguous? What? What's ambiguous? To release one. It, it just opens up a Pandora's box. So you don't know where to stop. Yeah. You just say no the next time. You don't want it's going to make a decision all the time. Uh, sure. Okay. I said if it's based <laughs> on facts. If you if you got ten units and you release Subjective. one, then you've got the asset value behind nine units. By the time you're up to the sixth unit, maybe you can't do the seventh one because all of a sudden you give up whatever leverage you had. Well, that's that's why I think it's better just you know have a reference to the open order of conditions in the deed, and then at some point I think if enough units are sold, then someone will say you know we want to get this out. I'm certainly of the deed. willing. We we need to have belt and suspenders on this if we're going to have partial releases. No question about it. This is another example why we need an agent that has some experience. Well, that, exactly. <laughs> you know, that, and I was just having that conversation with David the other day when he brought this up. I said, you know, it's it's good to have an agent that's been out there working in different communities. He's got a lot of experience and sees how others do it. Um, you know, we had a practice for a good, good 25 years or so where we, you know, fact and circumstances. We, as Dave said, we want to make sure we still kept leverage because we didn't want to lose the leverage. But on the other hand, when you think about it. It's sometimes difficult to stay on top of the files and, and the filings. That's and why no is easier. Hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. No is easier. Mm -hmm. and, and to David's point, that happened, That does happen a lot, where there's something out there in the registry of deeds and it says certificate compliance, and, and people don't really distinguish between a partial one and a, you know, a full right. one, and it just it can confuse things at that point in time. So I, it seems like a good practice to me, and if it becomes a problem, we can, uh, you know, an applicant could come in front of us and plead their case, you know. The but reason why it's coming up now is because the attorneys and the banks want the COCs. They're getting more thorough now. Right. 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 Good. So is there somebody who wants to sell it right now? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the first time this property's come up as far as come to light in this problem? For, for this sort of issue, yes. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to hold somebody hostage. It's selling their property, right. but I think it's uh, to let the association know, let the owners know that it's going to become a problem if somebody wants to sell something if the work isn't done. Oh, I think they understand that I, now. I think but they understand it. The association maybe does in the management company, but do the owners know? The trouble is these open items on this COC aren't going to be addressed for a year. I mean, to tell right. Me that's we're not going to allow someone to sell a, their house between. No, them. no, no. That's what. That's that's why I say I'm I'm willing to write a, a, write a write a letter, letter. which time, is always working time. each time. Yeah. Well, yeah. For the next year. Right, and you know, just right. use basically yeah. the same letter. <clears throat> you know, I you know, to be perfectly honest with you, I, you know, the president of the association admitted when push comes to shove, it's really not the association's problem; it's the individual unit owner's problem. <laughs> But as I say, I I, I think that um, that I, I, that I'm willing to write the letter, and that's always, that's always been acceptable to the attorneys in the past. So, can we see? Do we want to see the letter? Yeah, I'd like to see a copy of the letter. Okay. Well, I haven't drafted it yet, but but sure. When you when you you know yeah. write it up, yeah, sure. copy me and uh, Dave. You probably want to see a copy too, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Send us a copy. We appreciate right. it. It'd be yeah. good to see. Sure. And I think it's going to be good. So thanks. All right. Good discussion. Do you need a vote from us tonight? No, no, no there's no vote needed. Good discussion. All right. Moving on to continual business. Uh, we need a status update on the appeal of the order of conditions. Uh, Dave, what's happening on that? Any, any uh, further? Um uh, so I think I think we've we've ar we've arrived at a um, you know a plan for moving forward. Uh, and I think that's to uh, for the town to request an amended order of conditions re re reducing this, the um, scope of potential treatment to the swimming area. Sure. 
um, and that I think that's a good compromise. I think that there are good ways of addressing, you know, uh, the concerns with with herbicides um, by you know going going that route. Um, it's 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 a matter of then holding another public hearing and then the commission um, issuing an amended order of conditions. Um, so uh, hoping hope, hoping to meet w with uh, the ad hoc group. Uh, we have we have a meeting scheduled for so, Thursday. So the area has been changed. You said it's only going to be the swimming area. Yep, yeah, that's that's what the the consensus approach is at this so point. So the size of the project is significantly less. Significantly less, yes. And the fact that it's public swimming doesn't bother anybody. We're putting herbicides there. You wouldn't let them swim for a few days. Right, right. That's the, all. The, the right, okay. the, the beach. Um, but you know, there's, as I say, there's another another public hearing is uh, needed, um, and you know, it needs to be discussion of these issues, and you know, what the special conditions uh, in the amended order will be. Um, so that's okay. The, well, the thanks, David. Sounds now. like uh, people are coming together, making some compromises, and in mitigating any potential risk. DP satisfied with what we're doing? Um, well, I, I, I did have a, um, a conversation with uh, Mr. Bogue of DEP, and he, he, he sounded like Good. he was okay. He was okay with that. Um, you know, once once the um, the request for the amended order of conditions is submitted to DEP, we'll see if they have any other comments. Good. Well, great. Thanks. All right, Mr. Chair, would uh, sure. would it make sense to jump to the agent's report? I know there's someone on the. I've been seeing a face on here. Relative to the agent's report, before we do the other stuff, oh, that, that 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 would be good, Carl. Yes, yeah, thank good you. idea. Yeah. Good idea. So we'll uh, jump ahead on the agenda to the agent's report, and this was related to a buffer zone violation for a 201 Boston Road, uh, Mr. Agent. So uh, I'll I'll just we we, we do have um, Bob McNamara here, who's the owner of the property, but I'll but I'll just uh, quickly give some background. So um, I, I, I had heard from a couple of people um, concerned about some work that was being done at uh, 201 Boston uh, Road, which is the, the Chelmsford Lumber Yard, some work in the buffer zone. Um, so I went down and took a look at it. Uh, the, the, the work um, was completed when, when I got there. In fact, the area had been very nicely loamed and graded, loamed and seeded. It actually looked to me like it was a very good job. Um, the, the only recommendation or the only really instructions I gave was that wattles be um, placed uh, on, on the site. Um, in order to prevent any erosion, uh, and that that was done. I went went down. I did another visit today, just just to check, um, you know, because we have had some rain recently, and you know, there's some additional work in that regard that needs to be done. They need they need to be staked. Um, I did see a little bit of ro erosion that was getting underneath the wattles. Nothing nothing catastrophic, um, but uh, I, I I did explain to uh, Mr. McNamara. Um, that in these kind of a situations that the commission's policy is to require an after the fact filing with the commission i mean ultimately it's the commission's des decision as to how you want to um, proceed in this case um, but i think that would be consistent with how you've handled similar situations in the past i think i think if if the filing had been done in advance of the work i think an rda would would have been appropriate in this case so I think as an after the fact filing, I think an RDA is would be appropriate. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. You know, speaking as chairman, I mean, I, I think I'd like to just. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad the work's going well. I'm glad uh, uh, the folks are working with our agent. That's good. But you know, keep things right. Make sure we had you know the right permits. I think a you know an RDA. You know, it's really kind of our our most informal, less uh, you know difficult permitting. Um, but I think that's a good way to do it. Is just get that thing filed in here. We can uh, review it approve it and make everything, you know, again, get the work done, make everything, everything can end up right. So that's what I'd like to see. Other comments from commissioners? Will, will the work be ongoing while we wait for a filing? Or will he stop work until the filing? Uh, it's the, the work has been completed. It's been completed. It's completed, um, and I th I think the the plan is and again. We, uh, Mr. McNamara uh, chime in, but I think the plan is is just to leave it as permanently maintained lawn. 
which 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 I'm fine with. I I think that I think I think it's actually def compared to what I've heard was out there before. I think it's a very definite improvement to the site. I think I think there are some issues. I think there's there's a lot of uh, runoff, stormwater runoff from the driveway that flows in, you know, down that incline toward the wetland. But my understanding from Mr. McNamara is that they do have plans to address that. That'll be in the filing. I don't think it'll be in this filing. No, it'll it'll be a subsequent filing to do that. But I think I think once once this area is, you know, the veg the grass is growing, is fully established and growing vigorously. I think that 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 will be okay for a while until they um, deal with the, the larger problem. Well, that sounds good. Mr. McNamara, if you're uh, out there and can hear us, do you have any comments you'd like to make to the commission at this point? No, I don't. Um, thank you, David. Um, just two, two things. There were, I'm not sure if, if you're all familiar with the properties, but there are two parcels. Um, the work we were initially doing was just restoring um, the area behind 203 Boston Road, which is the white farmhouse. We purchased that last year. And uh, Mr. Harvey, our neighbor, he, he did the work for us and continued um, towards the rear of our yard, which the, the, two, the two lots abut. So the, two, the total p two parcels um, are almost eight acres. And most of it is open grass and, and obviously the wetlands along the stream along Boston Road. So we have no intention of going in there. It was just restore it, create a continuous pasture type area uh, that abuts um, Bob Harvey's uh, field where the, where the horses are. Yeah. Um, that's all. That's all we were intending to do. Okay. Good. Well, I'm I'm glad you're working with uh, our agent, and I think things are gonna. Sounds like we're on a path to get everything uh, worked out right. So, sure. what, what what is an RDA? A request for determination of applicability. Okay. It's now, a, what is that? <laughs> it, that is a form you fill out, and basically, it's a it's a description of the work that would be done. In this case, it's been done already, but a description of the work. Uh, it's going to be a diagram of your yard, the property, um, and it's going to show kind of the areas um, that are on there. And then also, there's a, there's a, a line for where the the wetlands line is. Our jurisdiction is any work that's done within a hundred feet of what's called bordering vegetated wetlands or, you know, um, you know, the wetlands area. And a lot of times it's delineated, you know, there's a brook back there, there's a swampy thing. It's, it's usually, I mean, our agent can kind of help explain where that line is. But you just file that paperwork. So it's paperwork, it's an application. Um, it's uh, reviewed by the commission. If you have any questions, we'll ask. And then basically we take a vote. And at the end of the day, typically what we do is we give what's called a negative determination. And, and negative is good in the sense it's like when your, your uh, medical test comes back and it's a negative. So negative determination is, is we're okay with the work as, as presented to us. It's a file. It's approved. It's in our system. And it's uh, basically, that's kind of the end of it. You don't have to go through the, the more formal process is a, a more complex um, process called a notice of intent filing. And that requires a butter notifications. It's more expensive, it's more hassle. And typically you have to hire an engineer to go through it all. So we wanna, we don't want you to go through that process of, of that. That's not necessary. So the RDA, Request for Determination of Applicability, it comes in front of the commission. We take a vote on it, uh, presumably at the next meeting. I hope, I hope that, did that help some? Yep. Yes, it yep. does. Um, does the commission want uh, the wetlands to be flagged by uh, by professional wetland scientists? I I think it would be good uh, um, to do for future reference, just in case they ever wanted to do more work on the site. It would be good to have that wetland already delineated. That would just be my opinion. Comments? Well, how close to the wetlands has the work been done? Uh, I would estimate it's probably, you know, 40, 50 feet away. Mm, that's a fair. Uh, yeah. It's always well. been pasture. Mm -hmm. I'd kind of say, Passes. I'd kind of say no on the, the wetlands flagging at this point. It's, uh, at least until we see the paperwork come in. What do you guys think? Well, I think it's new. It's fairly purchased property, so there should be a certified plot plan that will give us a good idea. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to, you mentioned a sketch. I, I like to certify. Yeah, I like to certified plot plan. I'm Absolutely. trying to get that way all the time on all. Yeah, I agree. Certified. Yeah, I, I agree. So I yeah. think if, 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 you're, if you don't require a, um, a professional, you know, wetland delineation, then, then I, but I think then that the wetlands 
uh, on the town GIS site should be used. I think there needs, I think the wetlands, some sort of wetland mm -hmm. plan does need to be submitted. Okay. So I, I can talk to you more about that, Bob. Okay, do, do, do you want, I have um, plot plans for both both parcels. Do you want those? Sure, yeah. Okay. They, they may not show the wetlands, but they would be good. No, they don't. They would they be don't. good to use as a base plan. Yeah, okay, okay. Other comments, the commissioners? No, that sounds good. Cool. All right. I mean, the town's GIS shows the parking lot almost abuts the wetlands. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's definitely within the buffer zone. All right. And again, we reserve. If it comes in in front of us, we see the filings and we want more done, like we need a, a body to go out there and flag it, then obviously uh, the commission, you know, has that reserves that discretion to require that if it's necessary. You know? Okay. All right, good. So we'll. Right, uh, thank, you. thank you, everyone. Very good. Thank you, Bob. We'll see you now, soon, probably. Okay. All okay, right, sir. Bye now. Have a good night. Yeah. Too. Okay. So that was the uh, agent's report. Uh, next item we have is going back on the agenda to the land management discussion. Uh, Carl, any updates on uh, what's happening out there? Um, so we're still. <laughs> Bill, Bill and I were there today. We're still waiting to get the granite sign installation done. It was supposed to start today. It didn't happen today. We're hoping this week that would be both the conservation granite sign on the driveway and the engraving. So hopefully with Bill's uh, nudging the contractor. Um, I'm going to go up there tomorrow morning and see him again. I've been going up almost every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning, wow. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a pride. Bring a stun right? gun. <laughs> right. So the first day he's going to put the dig the holes, put the posts in, some, put a couple of bags of cement in each hole, let it set a day. Then the next day he'll come and put the sign, slide the sign on, and then they'll do the uh, the rock, hopefully the same day they put the sign in. Yeah. So I'll go up and see him tomorrow morning. So that's uh, that's there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We're still slowly moving forward on the CR. Uh, we do have a new uh, person to do the BDR, the baseline documentation review. Um, that's in process. Yeah, and and, and the other the other two main issues with the CR are the uh, the easements in particular, in particular in particular the 115 Parker Road easement. Um, which a surveyor is still working on that plan. Uh, I don't know the details, but I gather maybe he's run into some unexpected issues having to do with the fact that it's registered land. That's kind of what he implied. Um, maybe some issues that weren't uncovered before, but he, he, he did say that he expects to have a draft plan of that easement ready shortly. Uh, and then just the other primary issue with the CR is is the producing a plan for the area that the water department may potentially use at some point. So I have I have sent uh, 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 an example of the type of plan we need over to the Chelmsford Water District. Um, ask them to you know produce a plan for the area on Warren Pole. Um, that th they potentially might be interested in, so I think they're working on it. You know, so I'll uh, I'll ask Good. at some point I'll ask for a status on that. So once the, once the sign goes in, are we going to have a grand opening or some kind of? Yeah, we may want to start thinking how that's going to go. Yeah, we've got some ideas on that. It'll be at least a couple of weeks lead time until the sign. Do you want to see the sign? Do you want to give a speech? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the sign in place and the engraving right, done. Right. So, uh, We've got a list of about 40 odd people, not of whom. Yeah, I don't know that we we'll invite them, them all. And we certainly don't want them all to talk. Well, we certainly want to invite all the commissioners here. Yep, yep, yep. I, I do want to, I, I do think we need to uh, mention the DPW and make them a part of it because they yep. did a lot of work down there and they took a lot of. They're on the list. Okay. Yep, Good. yep, they're on the list. Uh, the other thing is I will just tell you guys that I've been hearing a lot of good feedback. Every time I go out there, I see people there, and they just love it. Um, I saw some Great. people there today that hadn't hadn't been there, and they just were like, wow, this is amazing. This is a great place. They're really, really enjoying it. So it's getting a lot of good, um, I wouldn't say heavy use yet, but um, it's pretty steady uh, amount, of, amount of visitors. And um, 
it's good. It's all good. I would say I think it's going to take a long time to complete CR. Yeah. I think we're going to be waiting on the lawyers. We need to. Well, but it doesn't prevent us from operating and from yeah. running. No, no, no. The, the other thing, uh, Dave, I mentioned to you and David last week that um, I, I went to the MACC conference, and one of the things I learned was that the um, the state CR reviewer has not had a pos person in that position for over a year. So there's a oh, backlog. So if we had completed it, it wouldn't have been going anywhere. It would have been sitting on a desk for months. Um, so, But we don't have any real leverage to get it done. No, if it, if it were part of a, if it were grant requirements, um, uh, you know, I think that'd be a different situation. But you know, this is there's no money riding on this one, so no. it, we're, yeah, we're it's, it's going to take a while. We just have an earnest, good effort to get it done. We, we are definitely trying to get it done, but uh, okay. So yeah, that's it. Uh, the next item on the list was on the right reservation, and I'm not exactly sure what we we're going to talk about there, other than we just talked like last time, Dave. You were here, but you gave us a little update on some of the potential work that was going to be out done out there as far as the uh, some bridges and some trail yeah. work and yeah you, you so we didn't think it was going to be as, ex as extensive as we maybe thought it was going so to be. so so there's two separate things that are like on the table here one is the um, just general maintenance of some of the walkways that are there and some of the um, the, the steps, uh, you know, the, um, what do they call them? They're just, they're not really bridges, but they're board, the board wooden walk. spans and boardwalks right. that are that are 10 feet, 8 feet. Um, and there's, there's a need to replace some of those. Yeah, um, if you go over there and jump up and down, you might be able to. Is that what I never do? Yeah. yeah. I want to try that. We all move. <laughs> we're, we're all waiting. There, there we go. go. Oh, we got it. That was it. Just, uh, uh, we need a little more so, action. So, so yes. Yeah. touch. <laughs> So one thing is just oh, basically the, the simple... Uh, <laughs> he liked it, though, in the dark, yeah. Um, repair and replacement of existing okay. small things. And then the second thing is a major project to extend the boardwalk, which Phil had asked about possibly having a Eagle Scout do this, and we discussed this many weeks ago now and agreed that it was bigger than an Eagle Scout project. And so... Um, but we do totally want to do this. We, we think it's a good thing to do, but um, we need to get other resources uh, to, to take it on as a project. So yeah, that's it's going to be a major project. It would be good to kind of have a little presentation in front of the commission, yeah, I think. Yeah. You know. So two, two different things. Do we, do we expect cost to do that too? Um, or are we going to do it I ourselves? know some guys that are uh, capable and willing to do something like that. So, yeah, on cost, yeah. Yep, so it's right. possible. Good. No. Um, can I add one more thing? Um, I know uh, Dave Sperry was um, talking to me, and there is a um, uh, the what do they call it? The Chelmsford Clean Energy and Sustainability Sustainability Committee has worked with Weston and Sampson on developing an action plan for Chelmsford, and it's multiple. You know, like 100, 150, 200 pages. I forget. I saw it um, briefly. <laughs> uh, I haven't looked at it in depth. Um, but they, uh, there is a number of, uh, there are a number of things in there that are um, in our general space of um, open space, uh, open space bylaws, uh, and uh, just some suggestions. So just to let you guys know that there's that going this is on. their recommendation or Wesson and Sampson's Wesson and Sampson's looking at our our bylaws across many many areas you know building facility energy whatever all kinds of different things but one of the areas was is open space bylaw so um, we can you know just be aware that that's going on and that may come up and I hit, would, hit our radar in some other the way. chair of that committee made a presentation last night to the Board of Selectmen I thought it was typical bureaucratic presentation. So confusing and the language was so convoluted, I didn't really understand what they want to do. But the one thing that was noticeably missing from their presentation, there was no discussion about, they were talking about how much COT, CO2 people generate and what we can do to stop it. Mm -hmm. No discussion, no comment whatsoever about planting trees. This town does not have a residential tree bylaw. It allows lots to be clear-cutted without any replication. Fortunately, we've been asking for it. I think that committee should 
take it under advisement to talk about how do you reasonably manage tree restoration. Remember I said reasonably. Yep. So anyway, I just wanted to make that, just share that with the, with the rest of the commission. No, great. It's good. I mean, I don't know, Dave, could we, as the Conservation Commission, sponsor some sort of bylaw at the town well, meeting or we could. Well, we could certainly support it, but it's outside of our legal jurisdiction because yeah. our jurisdiction is well, within 100 feet. But, but, I think, but, I, but I think what you we know, do our, have a, our charter way back is Yeah, you can interpret resources. our charter. But so. we do have a tree committee in town, but they only focus on trees on municipal property. Why couldn't they focus on trees? The committee exists. Anyhow. You know. Is there one existing in other towns that we could follow? Yep. Lexington has exactly. a good one. Exactly. So maybe we too, can copy too something progressive from Lexington. For you, I know, but right. And the commission could go into town meeting and say, hey, this is a really good idea. We recommend the town do this. And we just kind of take right. some leadership on it. It's not a bad idea. It's to a think proven. You know, where, you know where we saw it? In, in spades. Yeah. Remember it was a, la a year or so ago up off of jo on Jordan Road with that, that woman. She'd retired. She bought so, a new house. Not Jordan. It was, but yeah. Loisel. Lo yeah, Loisel. Love it Lane. Love it Lane. Lane. Love it Lane. 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 Yeah, uh, she had sold her house and she bought a new house there and she wanted a lawn. Yeah. So she clear cut it about 30 trees yeah. with no plans to replace any of them. Now you don't you're certainly not going to ask you to replace 30. But th but she didn't have to either. I mean, there was no requirement. So somewhere in between there, if you want to replace CO2 grabbing stuff, you need to encourage trees. Anyhow, All right. I hope that committee thinks about that. Okay. All right. Is there anything, uh, Dave, going on up at <coughs> Wellman Avenue? You heard any more from the associations up there as far as the... Um, I, um, I, I, did, I did get a call from uh, Mr. Diggs asking me the same question, and I just haven't had a chance yet to um, uh, ask a consultant to submit a proposal, but that's getting higher, higher and higher on my list of priorities. So. This, is, this is to look at the work that was done in right. the bank? Right. And, and what and needs to be maintained? Right, and uh, really, the perspective I'm approaching that is from is compliance with the certificate of compliance. Right. You know that that's yeah. what I feel my job is. You know, and 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 if there is additional work that needs to be done to bring it into compliance, I mean, we can talk about who's going to pay for it, but you know, it 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 needs to be done. Um, if you know they want some kind of release, I don't know what the release would be in that case because the certificate of compliance was already issued, but. We can talk about it. Dave, how much, do you know now how much work is involved in the agent keeping abreast of these annual reports that we require to be filed? Um, I, I think it's actually uh, uh, e easier than you might think because I'm, I'm just requiring that they be sent to me by email. Right. And then I just, I just put them in the, the, the project file on the computer. But we um, don't know whether they're actually, do although there's an engineer's signature on it, right? That it's, the work was done, yeah. There should be somebody. Somebody has to sign that the work's done. Right. You don't have to yes. go out and check it, do you? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't plan to do that. I, th I think I think the main um, way they're important is that let's say something goes wrong. Suppose that there's some yeah. sort of a failure. We just we will have a record that all of the inspection and maintenance reports were done, you know, whatever frequency is required. So good that to hear that's not an overwhelming amount of work. No, no, that's no, good. no, it's not. All right. Only, only when they're not done. Right. <laughs> then, it, then it's a lot. You're right. A lot more work. <laughs> All right. Next item on the agenda is the approval of signatures. Uh, do we have a certificate of compliance? Yes. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, 24 Fenwick Road. That was for a, uh, a new garage and patio. Um, I did a site inspection on October 17th, verified that everything is in compliance uh, with the order conditions. So I um, recommend the commission issue the certificate of compliance. All right, do we motion to approve? So moved. Uh, moved. Seconded. Second. By Carl. Moved by Dave. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. All right. Very good. We'll have that down, pass that down for signature now. And while that's coming down for signature, we have minutes uh, from um, 
September 27th, as well as October 11th. So why don't we just take a look at those, give it a last review, and we can move to approve the minutes as well in a moment or two. Dave, do we know anything more about that uh, piece of land up on Wilson Street as far as the, uh, do we have rights over that? Um, I'm sti we're still waiting for the title, the title report. Still doing on it, that, okay. So. Somebody asked me if, if that new parcel on Wilson and, and the pieces that we own has direct access to Freeman Lake. I don't think it does. No, no, yeah. not direct access. Yeah. All right, uh, September 27th minutes. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? I move we approve the minutes of September 27th, 2022. Right. Motion to approve. Move a second. Second. All right, second by Bill. Moved by Dave. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Yeah, right. When abstention, uh, Mr. Chris Moore. All right, then we have the minutes of October 11th. Uh, let's just take a minute to look at those two. Mm. Change that about you making the motion to? I think she did. <laughs> I did in, in my copy. I changed. All right, these these have not That's the old copy. Okay. <laughs> He's got all of our names in a separate file. She just pushes a button. Right. When you can be gone in a minute. She wants a name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's my enemy. <laughs> I move we approve the October 11th minutes. Motion to approve. Do we have a second on that? Second. Second by Carl. Motion by Mark. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye abstain. One abstention. Aye abstain. Uh, we actually have two abstentions. Mr. McLaughlin as well as John. And that's it. Motion carries. So, so um, I think there's just one more order of business, uh, Mr. Chairman. It's not on the agenda, but a cu couple of meetings ago, the com commission continued a notice, the notice of intent hearing for 270 Bill Ricker Road mm -hmm. to November 8th. Um, it turns out, didn't know at that time that there would not be a meeting on November 8th. So um, I uh, did just receive a request for a continuance to November 22nd. So I'd just like to ask the commission to vote. All right, we'll have a motion then. So moved. All right, good, so moved. We have a second on that. All right. Good, John Swenson on the second. Who did the first? Me. Uh, Carl, Carl on the, fr on the motion, okay. seconded by John Swenson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Unanimous. Dave, right. are they redesigning that project? Yeah, I guess they're doing a significant redesign. Is that because, because of, the planning board didn't like it? That Well, the planning board is required. That was terrible. You should have, oh. you, well, you should have seen town meeting. Uh, 
Oh, well. We are being televised still, so. Uh, we adjourned. <laughs> motion to adjourn. All so moved. So moved by Dave. Second. Carl the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. <laughs> the meeting's over.